Welcome to integration by substitution. Like a lot of students find this the most difficult thing they do in all of uh, the math course. So I don't know what you're going to think, but maybe that's the case. By the way, this one here is an example of what not to do. This is pretty much everything about this one here is wrong. I was like, no. For example, they forgot the DX. You can't cancel out this. This isn't how it works. Basically, if you want to make a teacher really upset, just show them this thing. I'm like, oh God, no, nothing here is right. Let me show you what to do here. We're going to use this method, this integration by substitution, when we have a really complicated looking integral. So something like this. This looks horrible. Because we don't really have a product rule. We don't really have a chain rule. We don't really have a quotient rule for integration. Not exactly. I mean, this is sometimes called the reverse chain rule, what we're doing. But there's not really some simple method to do this. Um, but there kind of is. That's what I'm going to show you. So the trick is when you see something that looks really awful like this, uh, then you hope that you can do it by integration by substitution. So what we're going to look for is three different parts. And they're going to contain two functions where one is a derivative of the other. So I'm just going to show you just how this one here might work. We're going to guess at something we're going to call it u. Okay, so I'll just show you that later. You'll see it on the next slide. I'm going to say, look, guess at u. I'm going to say you're going to guess. I'm just going to show you the end result right now just to show you. So let's say I said that u was uh, x squared plus 1. Let's just pretend that's what I decide u is. Well, what we're looking for is that du dx, like the derivative of u with respect to x. Let's see, it's just going to be 2 times x. Do you see that was the derivative of this one? Oh, sorry, this is the derivative of that one. And what we're looking for, do you notice then, we can rewrite this integral as integral of u squared. Do you notice? It's just this thing squared. Now, times this 2x, which is this thing here sitting here. Um, but we can rewrite the 2x instead as Hey, this 2x is the same thing as du dx. Do you notice? du dx, then dx. And we're going to see what do we do about this. So here's the equation of how it works. We say the integral. In more general terms, we're going to say the integral of f of u. This is some function of u. In this case, it's u squared. It could be like a square root or a sine of u or whatever. So it's f of u times du dx dx is going to equal the integral of, it's almost like the dx's cancel out. They don't exactly, you can't really do that, but it's kind of like you can. And you end up with just f u d u. Now this already looks really complicated. I think a lot of students, when they look at this, they just think, oh god, what do I do here? Um, and in fact, when I learned about this, I used to think, oh, it's like f u. It's almost like you're giving this question the middle finger, like f u, maybe. But you don't really have to memorize this. I'm actually not exactly going to use this. I'm going to show you an algorithm to follow that kind of uses this. So I'm going to say we essentially use this. The key thing in this method is that, do you notice there's three things going on? There's three different parts to this. There is a thing called a function of u. We've got a thing right here, and we've got a thing right here. We've got these three items. And that's going to be the key to the way I'm going to show you. So I'm going to give you an algorithm to follow with all these, and I'm going to show you with a bunch of examples. I'll show you that really nasty one we just had. I'll show you another one. I'll show you another one, and I'll show you another one. So I'll just show you a bunch of them that look really horrible. We're going to solve them in the same way. It's going to be very, very easy once you get used to it. Well, maybe not easy, but it'll be easier. So we're going to take horrible looking things and make them better. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to guess at what u is. So if you're not sure, a good guess, at least, it's not always the case, that's why I say often it's the one with the highest exponent, or often it's the denominator if you have like a fraction. So you're going to first guess at u. Then you're going to find du dx, you're going to isolate for dx. So you're going to say like dx equals something, you're going to put that in. Then you're going to rewrite your integral, this is the key part. You're going to rewrite it as something times f of u, sorry, so you're going to have your integral of f of u times something that's sitting here times dx. And you're going to make that substitution, in fact. That's the whole thing. We call integration by substitution for a reason. I'll explain that in a second, okay? It'll, it'll make sense when we practice it. We're going to substitute this thing for this thing. Hopefully a miracle occurs, the x's cancel out, we evaluate the integral for u, then we replace for x when we're done. Let me show you what I mean, because otherwise this makes no sense, okay? But I like this, a miracle occurs. Let's see if this is going to happen. So first, let's guess at u. 
Well, I kind of told you, the one where the highest exponent often is, you're looking for something where there's a derivative of that something beside it. Now, they don't have to be in this order, but they often are. So in this case right here, we've got x squared plus 1. I'm going to guess that u is x squared plus 1. Now, I'll know I did it right, because if I do du dx, if I do the derivative of that thing that I just said, so that gives me 2x, there should be something in there that's multiplying by it. It should look like it. Now, it might be a different factor. It might be like 4x. That's fine. As long as the x's are going to cancel out later, you're going to see that. So after you've done this a few times, you'll start to notice patterns. But for right now, if you haven't done this before, it's going to look wacky. Just trust me. So we guessed at u. We found du dx. And what did I say to do? You isolate for dx. So watch. I'm going to say dx equals. I'm going to get dx on its own as if you could do that. So I'm going to put the dx over here, put the 2x on the other side. So I have du over uh, 2x. That's what I'm going to have for my dx. Okay, my dx is du over uh, 2x. Now I'm going to rewrite my integral. So now I'm actually already at this uh, third part here. So let me just rewrite the integral here. So I'll say the integral of, let's see here, the integral of now, this is u squared. So I'm going to say u squared times this 2x. It's just hanging out there. There's a 2x. And then I'm going to replace for dx. Instead of putting dx, I'm going to put in this one. I just want to show you that's my substitution. So I want to say du over 2x. See, I've done this part. I've done the three different parts. I got a function of u, a thing hanging out, and then my dx that I replaced. Look what happens. A miracle does occur. The two x's completely cancel out. See, the miracle did occur. So what does that mean? Well, that means now I can do the integral. Watch how easy this is. I can do, ah, well, the integral of u squared du, that's easy to do. How do I do the integral of something squared? It's going to be that something cubed over 3. Remember, that's how we do a polynomial integral. Don't forget plus c. And don't forget then I said replace for x when you're done. So don't forget. Actually, usually what I do is I circle u and I circle what dx is. Because I'm going to circle that so I can remember. Oh yeah, every time I see a u at the end, i got to make sure to replace it with x squared plus 1. That's what u was. So I see that whole thing cubed over 3 plus c. And I'm done. Isn't that kind of a magic trick? Now maybe that's a little bit wacky. It is. But I'm going to show you that we've done integration by substitution because I substituted my dx into this one. Let's do another example just to see how it goes here. I like this. It's some kind of elvish. I can't read it. That's a Lord of the Rings sort of joke with all this du, dv stuff. So let's look at this one right here. It looks really horrible, doesn't it? Yeah. There's no quotient rule exactly for uh, integrals. So what do we do? Well, we're going to use this idea again, this idea right here that we're going to guess at u. We're going to find du dx, isolate for dx. We'll rewrite the integral. A miracle occurs, and we do it. Let's see if it works. Remember I said to often guess the thing on the bottom if you need to? So I'm going to guess that u equals x cubed plus 1. If that's the case, let's do du dx. So if I do that derivative, let's see. The derivative of this is 3 x squared, because the 3 comes in front, this becomes one less, this one here disappears, poof. I'll get dx by itself, I always got to isolate for that, so I'll put the dx up here, that means I'll have du over 3x squared. So this is my u, this is my dx. And now I'm going to attempt to rewrite my integral, so watch very carefully, I'm going to split them up, watch carefully. This is the same thing as saying 1 over u, because that's this part right here. I'm going to split them. I'm going to put the 6x squared beside it. And then I'll put the dx beside it. So do you see this is the same thing as saying, um, I just want to show you, same thing as saying 1 over x squared plus 1, all that times 6x squared dx. It's like there's these three parts here. Okay, so that's the, the sneaky part is recognizing what to do here. So if I do it this way right here, I gotta still replace my dx. I gotta do that substitution. So here it comes. Instead of dx, I put in du over 3x squared. Well, the miracle mostly occurs. Do you notice the x squareds cancel out? But 6 over 3 is just 2, isn't it? So watch, I end up with the integral of 1 over u times 2 times du. Remember what happens with the integral of a constant? It just comes out in front. So I can say it's just 2 times the integral 
of 1 over u du. All right, what's the integral of 1 over x dx? We have that. We find that in our formula booklet. It's just natural log. So it's going to be 2 times, because it just sits out there, 2 times natural log of u plus c. Don't forget the plus c all the time. And don't forget then you got to replace your u uh, properly. So it's going to be equals, let's see, 2 times natural log. And instead of doing u, I put in x squared, uh, whoops, x cubed, sorry, plus 1, all that plus c. Ta-da! Isn't that kind of crazy? So we're solving these really hard-looking integrals by being lucky. We're lucky because we can write this in three different pieces where we have a function of u times du dx, and then we replace for this dx. Mostly. Do you notice here it was off by a little factor of 2, but who cares? That's all right. We just had a 2 in front. Let's do another one. Maybe one that looks really hard. Like, oh, God, cos x over sine x. That's cotangent of x. What? But don't worry. We don't panic. We just use the little tricks I told you. Remember I said often you should pick the highest exponent or the denominator as u? So let's just guess that u is sine x. Let's just hope this is going to work. Sometimes it doesn't work, then you have to guess the other one, right? But let's just see here. We'll guess the denominator is sine x. Well, what's du dx? What's the derivative of sine? You look that up. It's cos. All right, great. Then I'm going to get dx by itself. So dx is going to be, I'll put it up here, du over cos x is what I do here. This is what I'm going to be replacing. So I'm going to circle that, circle that. You see I've done u and dx? And I'm going to hope I can split this up. So let's just see, can I split it? I'm going to hope I can rewrite it as well, 1 over sine x, then times cos x, then times dx. That's what I'm going to be attempting to do here and see if magic occurs here. So times this. I've made my times really bad here. We're just here. Just remove it. There we go. That was a good one. And I'll put a little dot here. There we go. It's not a vector dot product here. I just mean times. All right, so let's attempt to do this integral now. I'm going to rewrite it now as a function of u. So instead of saying 1 over sine x, I say 1 over u. So it's going to be the integral of 1 over u. Times, well, this still hangs out. I still got a cos x there. Then I got times dx, and dx is, this is my substitution. It's du over cos x. Does a miracle occur? It better. Boom! They're all gone and there's not even any constants left over. Do you notice how easy it is? It's just the integral of 1 over u du. Ah, oh, that's way easier to look at. What's the integral of 1 over x dx? Natural log. So then my answer is going to be natural log of u plus c, except I just need to remember to replace for u. So u was actually sine x, so it's going to be sine x, all that, plus c, so the absolute value here. Isn't that kind of nice? Do you notice I'm smiling because I hope you're going to find it okay-ish? These take a lot of practice, okay? Let's do one last one. This one looks absolutely awful. What? 4 cos x e to the sine x? It's like chain rule, product rule, what's going on? No prob. We just got to take a guess. So it's not always obvious, okay? But I'm going to guess, uh, I could either guess cos or e or sine. But I'm going to, well, I know the derivative of cos is sine. I know the derivative of sine is cos. It's probably going to be one of them. And if you notice, I want something that's a function. Remember, I always want to write it as some sort of, I'm going to try to write it as some function of u times something left over times a dx. Do you notice there's a function? Like, which one has a function within it going on? Do you see it's e to the sine x? So that means there's a good reason to guess that u is sine x. Let's see if that's going to work, because I want to make it, you know, e to the u. We'll see if this works here. So I'm guessing that u is sine x. We'll see if it works. du dx, then, is going to be derivative of sine is cos x. So that's kind of nice. Then I get dx by itself. So dx comes up, cos x goes down, so I have du over cos x. This is my dx. My u is this. Let's hope it works. So I'm going to attempt to rewrite my integral now, and maybe I'll even put this in here first. I'm going to say integral of e to the power of, and not sine x, it's e to the power of u. Then I have times 4 cos x. That's just hanging out there. Then I have times dx. And dx I'm going to replace with du over cos x. And if you've done it right, a miracle will occur. 
Did a miracle occur? Yes, look, the cos x's cancel out. Now I still have a four hanging out, but that's all right. Because I'm gonna have the integral of e to the u times four times du, and remember what happens with the integral of a constant? It can be shoved in front, so it'll be four times the integral of e to the u du. What's the integral of e to the x dx? It's just e to the x. So that means this integral is just gonna become four e to the u. Don't forget plus c. And then don't forget again to replace for u. So instead of the u, we actually replace it with sine x. So it's e to the sine x plus c. And we're done. So do you see, we can actually do these. These look crazy, but we can actually do them. And if you weren't sure, by the way, just to show you, you could always check, right? Because this is supposed to be the uh, answer. If I take the derivative of this, I should get this. And this here is a chain rule derivative. I don't know if you feel like checking it. Maybe I can check it. I'll do a check. Let's do the derivative of this thing here. So let's do d by dx. Let's do the derivative of this thing here. 4 e to the sine x plus c. Let's try to do that. Well, let's see. Remember with chain rule? Do you remember what to do there? Chain rule is we take the derivative of the inside, oh sorry, derivative of the outside. I'll say the outside function here is uh, e to the something. The inside function is sine x. Well, what do we do? We say the derivative of the outside, that's how we do chain rule. We do derivative of the outside with the original inside. So derivative of this outside is gonna be four e to the sine x Right, uh, but then don't forget, I gotta multiply all that whole thing by the derivative of the inside. Sine becomes cos, and then I could maybe put my cos in front instead, so just so it's all the same. So I have four cos x e to the sine x. Is that what this is? And by the way, the derivative of the plus c that just disappears. Do you notice I get the same thing I should have? So that's how I know I've done it right. Isn't that kind of awesome? So this trick. It only works if you're lucky. Only if you can set it up where you have a function times a thing times a thing where this thing happens to be related to the derivative of u. So that's why you're kind of hoping that f of u, this function of u, times whatever's left over, in this case it was a 2x, you hope that that's something related to the derivative of u. And if that happens, a miracle occurs, right? Because your du dx and part of your dx, they cancel out. And you end up with things disappearing like your two x's here disappeared. Like over here you had your six x squared and your three x squared. Well, the x squared disappeared, but you had a number left over, but that's all right, it just propagated through. Over here, everything canceled out nicely. We didn't have any constants going on. Over here, it mostly canceled out except for a factor of four, so a four just hung out in front. That's it.